This video I released a couple of years ago on solutions for overlapping IP addresses in Azure turns out to be one of the most popular videos on the channel. I guess that represents people encountering this problem of IPs overlapping quite a lot. And uh, at the time, we talked about how a VPN gateway and private link service could be used to solve this. Well, since then, we have a, another solution using native components with Azure Firewall now, which is private DNAT. And that's what this video is going to be about, showing how this new feature in Azure Firewall can be used to solve overlapping IPs and contrast it a little bit to the other solutions. I'll leave a link to the blog post here by the product group. I won't uh, go through this in blog entirely, but in short, effectively Azure Firewall uh, sits in the data path, obviously, and allows traffic or not. And one of the functions it has is the ability to do NAT, which is a fairly typical feature of firewall appliances, uh, which has now come to the native Azure firewall inside of Azure. So before you, you came from a public IP on the internet, and then Azure firewall could intercept that traffic and perform a destination NAT, so change the destination IP address, to an internal server on your private network. So the use case there was kind of the obvious, I've got a private server internally on a private IP, I want to expose it externally to a public IP. And nothing, nothing new there. However, that feature didn't work if you were coming from another private IP in your network, whether it be a remote branch that's on a private IP or express route a VPN or another private IP in Azure. That wasn't a, a thing you could do. You couldn't specify the, the source and destination as private IP. Well, well now you can. This feature uh, has been announced in this blog post, and this talks about the, the overview of how it's configured, etc. It talks about the scenario of, well, you can use this with multiple Azure firewalls to get uh, VNets talking that have got overlapping IPs inside of Azure. And then it also talks about a scenario where you can use it to uh, use the DNAT function where the two remote endpoints don't have rootable address spaces. Uh, so the scenario that I'm going to use is, is quite similar to this one, uh, but, but slightly different. Uh, so let me uh, jump to the whiteboard. So before we had these solutions, we had the, okay, I've got the red branch overlapping with my blue spoke. How can I get them talking? Well, if it's a VPN connected branch, I can use the NAT function on the VPN gateway. And the previous video sort of did a detailed walkthrough of, of how that NAT block work, works in terms of the, the translations on the source and destination. We then talked about the ability to use private link service, which again, um, takes the sort of native abilities of private link to be IP address agnostic in the customer space. And uh, in this diagram here, again, red branch overlaps with blue spoke. Maybe those solutions are not applicable. Maybe you don't have IPsec. Maybe you have some applications not compatible with private link service. Well, this is where the third uh, option here is what I want to talk about. So imagine you have a branch here that overlaps with a spoke and you have a hub network. Well, you can't just come along and peer that spoke to your hub, right? Because that's going to cause a great deal of confusion for your hub. Your hub will think that this 192.168.2.0 slash 24 address space exists on-prem and it exists via VNet peering. And um, well, the VNet peering route would win. So effectively you have no route to your remote branch. So how can we use the Azure Firewall private DNAT feature? Well, if we first of all disconnect that spoke from the hub, the hub now knows about the 192.168.2.0 slash 24 address space via, in this case, express route only. And then we insert what I'm calling a NAT layer VNet, so like a shim here, which is going to be used to perform the NAT between um, the hub and the, let's say, disconnected spoke in this scenario. So let me explain how the traffic flow works and then I'll show you it working, show you the portal, et cetera. Okay, so if the um, on-prem client here wants to establish connectivity to my application, you see the address ranges overlap, 
normally if it established a connection from 192.168.2.1 to 2.5, it would try and resolve that locally and find it doesn't exist in the local subnet. Uh, obviously that traffic would go nowhere. If we insert on the Azure firewall in the hub here, a DNAT rule that says any traffic coming to me, which is the Azure firewall IP on port 80, DNAT it to this IP, 192.168.2.4, which happens to be the IP address of the Azure firewall in this intermediate VNet. So this traffic then comes to this Azure firewall. The Azure firewall does two things. It flips the destination IP, which will get the traffic across VNet peer into this VNet. Azure firewall also implicitly snaps the traffic when it performs DNAT. So the packet will leave, go across here with a source of a Azure firewall node IP from the Azure firewall subnet. This firewall here in the middle will get the traffic and it will say, oh, there's a packet destined for, for me on port 80. There's another DRAT rule. So we've configured a, a separate DNAT rule on the middle Azure firewall that says any traffic destined to me on port 80, DNAT it to 192.168.2.5, which is the ultimate destination of our web server, which would have otherwise overlapped, which is reachable across another VNet peering connection. This Azure firewall does a similar thing. Destination IP here, source IP becomes a node IP in the orange Azure firewall. And the backend web server receives the traffic, it thinks, from this Azure firewall. And then the whole process is reversed. Like when this web server responds, it responds to Azure firewall, reverses the DNAT, goes to this Azure firewall, reverses the DNAT, goes down express route back to on-prem. The important thing is that in this diagram here, you don't need to use the remote gateway tick box. This NAT layer doesn't need advertising to on-prem because on-prem only needs to know how to connect to this Azure firewall in the hub. Okay, so that, that's how the data path works. At this point, I think it's probably prudent to sort of bubble back to the top and just take a reality check here or a sanity check. Does this make sense? Well, if you've been painted into a corner due to constraints that you have with IPs and features, maybe this will get you out of a hole. Uh, I'm not saying it's cost effective or pretty because running multiple firewalls just to perform DNAT for one server, that's certainly a big hammer. But technically this works and maybe there's a scenarios which are useful to you where you can use this functionality, uh, which is why I wanted to make a video and demonstrate it to you. But for sure, these Azure firewalls, I mean, of course, just different Azure firewall SKUs, basic, standard, premium, et cetera, et cetera. But that's logically how this is going to work. So let me split the screen now and we'll show you how it's set up in the portal and I'll show you the, the web server connecting. Okay, first things first, we look at the first Azure Firewall. This is my Azure Firewall in what is the hub here with the Express Route Gateway. This Azure Firewall, because it's in the hub, it's learning routes from Express Route Gateway. It's, it knows how to get to 192.168.2.1 via Express Route. It, hasn't, it actually has no idea that this VNet here, the blue one exists because it's two peerings detached. And we know VNet peering is, is not transitive in Azure. This firewall has a simple rule, a single DNAT rule here, which is doing what I described earlier. Any traffic from anywhere destined for me, the firewall, which is actually behind the scenes, you know, a load balancer fronting the firewall solution, on port 80, DNAT it to 192, sorry, 10.168.2.68 on port 80 which as we talked about before, is my orange firewall. So very, very simple config there. My other firewall, which I've called here Azure Firewall NAT, which is my orange firewall, again, has something very, very similar. If traffic sent to me on port 80, DNAT it to 2.5. Important to note that with this current config, the flow is unidirectional. It has to be initiated from on-prem for the DNAT rules to apply. If this application here wanted to initiate 
traffic to on-prem, you could set up the same rules in reverse, right? You'd have to configure it. So the application sends traffic here, which then goes this way. But it's not uh, bi-directional in nature. So in that sense, it's it's somewhat similar to you know, any any defined NAT config you're used to. It's the same as private link service. There's no sort of um, magic bullet here for uh, sort of uh, any to any bidirectional NAT in, in overlapping IP scenarios. And then if I come over here to my on-prem server, so this is in, in my branch, which is uh, connected via Express Route to Azure. You see it's got the IP address 192.168.2.1. It's got connectivity in a route to my hub with my firewall. And that means that if I go to this IP address 10.10.4.4, which is my Azure firewall on port 80, I'm getting back just a default Apache page here. I've installed Apache on this on this Ubuntu VM. So we see the end-to-end -end flow is working here. And as that blog post describes, if you were to dig into the logs, you can see the, the NAT translations being set up on Azure Firewall. And you see that on both the orange and the, the purple firewall. So hopefully that uh, was of interest to somebody, either for the actual DNet scenario, or maybe it, it helped solidify some other Azure networking principles that are at play here. If you have any questions, feel, feel free to drop them in the comments uh, below, and also check out the links to the official blog posts. Thanks for watching.